I have been in church almost all of my life. Yeah. My dad is a pastor. And I think the first time I went to church, I was three or four days old. Yeah. Yeah. My mom uh, took me to church when I was just a little baby. So I grew up in the church. And uh, I have also been in the ministry for more than 20 years. But even though I have been in the church and I have been in ministry, even though I have been in the church all my life and been in ministry, I still have to make this decision. Will I do the will of God? Or will I do my own will? This morning I want us to look at that kind of thing from scripture. Jesus said to his disciples, He said, Our spirit is willing, our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. There is something within us that wants to do the will of God. But oftentimes in our own ability we struggle with that. The Apostle Paul said, He said, I struggle in chapter 7 of Romans, I struggle. I know what is right. And I know what I should do. But there is something else within me that tries to pull me away from that. You know what I mean? And we often struggle with this dynamic in our own life. When we look at the life of Jesus, though, we find a great example. The perfect example. Of someone who is submitted to the will of God. Not because it was easy. Not because he did not have other options. But because he decided, I will do the will of the Father. And this morning, my prayer is this that we will find renewed strength. That the Holy Spirit will help us again to follow the example of Jesus. It said, Not my will, but your will be done. My desire, O oh God, is to surrender to your purpose for my life. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 4. We're going to read verse 27 through verse 35. It says, Just then the disciples came back and they marveled that he was talking to a woman, but no one said, What do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to meet Jesus. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has someone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white under harvest. 
đến một bản sao Chúng ta nói với các con hãy bước mắt lên và xem những cánh đồng đã vàng đã sẵn sàng cho mùa gặp This morning, I want us to look at a few things from this story in John chapter 4. There is so much here that we can't talk about. But first of all, I want us to see the story for just a moment. Jesus and his disciples are going from Jerusalem back up to Galilee. And you know, Jews did not like Samaritans. The Jews thought that the Samaritans were dirty. And, and most of the time, Jews would not even engage in conversation with them. But as Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus said, I need to go through Samaria. This was very strange. It was not common for a Jew to do that, especially a Jewish teacher like Jesus. The Bible says that when they came to the city of Sychar, Jesus was hungry and sat down by a well. When they came to a small town, they, Jesus sat down by a well. And Jesus sent his disciples into the town to get some food. And while the disciples were away getting the food, a, a Samaritan woman came to the well. And she was there just to get water out of the well and then go home. That was her purpose. But Jesus started talking to her. And he began to ask her some questions that we will talk about in a few minutes. But when the disciples started coming back with the food, Jesus was finishing his conversation with the woman. And she starts to go back to town to tell people about Jesus. And the disciples are so surprised. And they're like, why is Jesus talking to a Samaritan? And why is Jesus talking to a woman? It was not common. Actually, a Jewish rabbi was not supposed to talk to a Samaritan woman. The disciples are so surprised and they're like, why is he doing this? So they're talking to one another about that. And this is where we find this part of the story. The disciples said, okay, Master, we brought you some food. Now remember, Jesus had stopped his journey because he was hungry. Jesus had stopped in his journey because he was hungry. And now the disciples, they bring him some bánh chương, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you, think, you, they think, you think they were bringing Jesus back to him? Back to him or something like that, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, maybe back to me, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, they bring the food and they say, hey, yeah, xin mời. Yeah. And Jesus said something to them that they're also surprised about again. And then Jesus said, oh, I have food to eat that you don't know about. The disciples were like, what? Really? We just went into town and bought you some bad chung and now you say you don't need it? They're very confused. Jesus, Jesus often used the ideas about food to talk to his disciples about uh, the kingdom purposes. But Jesus said, oh, I have food to eat that you don't know about. 
I'm sure the disciples were very upset, frustrated because they had gone to get the food and now Jesus said, I don't need it. But the truth is, the truth is, Jesus was not talking about bang chung or bang kuda. He wasn't talking about physical food. He was not. Jesus was hungry physically and he needed food, yes. But Jesus wanted to use this as a time to teach his disciples. He wanted them to see something about his life that they did not yet understand. Verse 34, Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his purpose or to accomplish his work. Jesus said, The thing that gives me strength and energy is obedience to the Father's will. You know, whenever we eat physically, when we eat physically, it gives us strength. When you wake up early in the morning and you're hungry, and you eat, go and you get yourself a, a bowl of banquet, it gives you strength to go on and do your work. I love banquet and how fun is the best in uh, this is one of your next sentence, right? <laughs> but, when we, but when we eat food, it gives us strength. We can go on and do what we need to do for the rest of the day. And here Jesus uses this food idea to talk about doing the will of God and to talk about the purpose of his life and to talk about what makes him go on. Jesus said the thing that gives me purpose the thing that gives me purpose and the thing that makes me go is obeying the will of the Father. Jesus said, doing the will of the Father. It doesn't drain me or make me tired. It's not something else I do in my life. It's not something I try to add to my life. No, the will of the Father is my life. It is the purpose of my life. It is what gives me energy and strength. And I believe this morning that maybe there are some people here in this room you're struggling with the will of God because maybe part of you is trying to do your own will. But you know God has something else. And right now today, you feel very tired spiritually. You feel stressed spiritually. Because you're trying to do your own will. But you know God has a purpose for your life. This morning God wants to remind you that when we submit to his will that we make his purpose our purpose it can give us purpose and strength for our life Amen I believe this morning that God wants his purpose to be the purpose of our life there are many people who get very spiritually distracted. They become very confused about their own purpose. Because they try to do their own will rather than the will of God. Here in 
heard this story, Jesus said, I get energy from doing the will of God. This morning, God wants to remind us His ways are perfect. His will is perfect. He is our creator. He is our savior. He is our Lord. And He does have a purpose for our lives. And when we submit to His will, we too can find renewed purpose and strength for our lives. Amen. John chapter 5. Jesus said, I do not seek to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. Jesus said, I want to do the Father's will. In John chapter 6, Jesus said, I came into the world not to do what I want to do, but to do the will of the Father. Church, I want to remind you this morning God loves you. He has a purpose for you. And He has a will for your life. And when we follow that will, we find purpose for our own life. Amen. Maybe this morning you have come here today and you feel burdened. You feel distracted. You feel overwhelmed by life. And this morning Jesus is saying, My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Come to me. Come to me. And allow me to give purpose and direction for your life. Amen. In John chapter 9, Jesus says again, my work or my activity is directed by what God wants me to do. This morning I want to remind you that God desires that all of our life, all of our life, our, our whole life, be submitted to His will. Sometimes we have this idea. Like Sunday is kind of the holy day. And it is a special day. And it is a special day where we worship God and focus on Him. But you know, God doesn't just want our Sunday, He wants our every day. Amen. He wants to be the Lord of our whole life. And if we are here worshiping God, or if we are working our job, or if we are raising our family, or if we are cooking food, God wants our life to be directed by His purpose and His will. That all of our life is for His glory. Amen. Whenever I look at this story, I see that there are many possible things that can keep us from doing the will of God. Sometimes in our lives we find a lot of reasons or excuses to not do the will of God. We kind of, oh, oh, but, 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 I don't know, maybe, you know, we have a lot of reasons with God why we don't do it. Is that right? Huh? Yeah, we have our own excuses. And sometimes 
Sometimes we think, oh, they're good enough for God to say, okay, go ahead and do your own will. But I don't think they're good enough, right? Yeah. Whenever I look at this story, I see there are at least four things that Jesus could have said was an excuse for him not to do God's will. Here, when Jesus tells his disciples, I am doing the will of God, or I want to do the will of God. He's talking about that he had talked to the Samaritan woman and shared with her the gospel. Jesus had told her about the living water that could give her eternal life. Jesus had said very clearly that he had came into the world to save those who were lost. So when Jesus talks about in this story doing the will of God, he's talking about what he did in sharing the gospel with this woman. And there are at least four things that Jesus could have used as a reason to not do that. The first thing that I see is this. The first excuse. And that is that Jesus had his own need in his life. Maybe you think, oh, Jesus is God. He did not have any new gods, right? But when we read this story, we find that Jesus was hungry and thirsty. He had his own need. He was tired. It would have been very easy for Jesus to say, yeah, I know this woman needs to know about Jesus. I know I should tell her about the living water. But I'm tired. I'm thirsty. I'm going home. I don't want to do the will of God. It would be very easy for him to say, I have my own need, and so I just won't do it right now. You know, sometimes in our life, we know that God wants us to do something. But we have our own needs, right? I think probably in this room today, we have needs. We have problems. We are weak. We have physical problems. We, we have monetary or money problems. We have problems with relationships. And sometimes we look at, at our own life and we say, oh God, we can't do your, I can't do your will because I have so many problems in my own life. This morning, God is saying, I still want to use you. I still have a purpose for you. Even if you are needy and broken, I still want to use you. Amen. We need to surrender again to God's purpose. And to hear God say to us, In your weakness, I am made strong. You know, whenever the Apostle Paul asked God to take away his problem, God said to Paul, My power is made great in your weakness. And I believe this morning that God is reminding you maybe you're not perfect. Maybe you have problems. Maybe you need something from God in your own life. 
But God is saying, I still have a purpose for you. And I want you, I want you to follow my will for your life. Amen. God has a purpose. He wants to use us. Having our own needs is not a good enough reason to not do the will of God. Another thing that I see here is this. Another reason that Jesus could have not done the will of God. And that is that his family and his culture said, don't do it. I already told you. It was not common or acceptable for a Jewish man to talk to a Samaritan woman. For sure, Jesus' culture and his family said, don't do that. Jewish people don't interact with Samaritan people. If you do that, you are weird and you do not fit in the culture and society. It would have been very easy for Jesus to say, God, you know what? Uh, my family and my culture will think, think I am strange, so I won't do it. But what we find is that that was not what Jesus did. Jesus said, my purpose is to do the will of the Father. And even if my family and the culture says, no, I must obey my Father. You know, sometimes in our life, Sometimes in our life, we know God has a purpose for us. And there is part of us that wants to do the will of God. And there is part of us that wants to obey the will of God. But we have our family and our culture. We say, don't do that. Do something else with your life. Go make some money. Find happiness and fulfillment in doing something else. If you give your life to the purpose of God, Desire of my flesh. 
saying yes to me. Và nói có với ngài. Even if it costs you something. Nếu mà mặc cho dù là cái điều đó nó khiến mình phải trả cái giá. Even if it is uncomfortable. Cho dù là cái điều đó nó khiến mình không thoải mái. We must follow him. Thì mình vẫn phải theo ngài. This morning I believe that God is speaking to us in this room today. Và buổi sáng nay tôi tin là Chúa ngài muốn nhắc chúng ta buổi sáng ngày hôm nay. God is reminding us, yes, I have a purpose for you. Là ta có một cái trách nhiệm của con. I have a will for your life. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to give some kind of reason or excuse to not follow that? Or are you going to choose to surrender again to the will of God? Maybe this morning in your heart you are in pain, in agony in your heart. Maybe you were, maybe you were like Jacob when he wrestled with God. You were struggling with God about your own, your own will and the will of God. This morning, God is telling you, I love you and I have a plan for you. But you will not experience my peace and my blessing until you surrender to my purpose for your life. Jesus said, I want to do my Father's will. I came into the world to do my Father's will. This morning, God is calling us again. Calling us to submit to His purpose. To, to not give some reason or excuse to not do His will. There's one more thing that I see here that could have been an excuse for Jesus. And that was that Jesus was already doing ministry. Huh? Jesus was already doing something for God. Jesus was leaving Jerusalem where he had done some great works for God. And he was on his way to Galilee where he would do many more works for God. Another excuse that Jesus could have used is this. He could have said, I am already doing something for God. I am doing miracles and I'm teaching my disciples. I just will ignore this woman. You know, sometimes for us in the church, we, we come to church and we do something. We help with some part of the church service. And that is good, right? You should help in the church. I'm sure Brother, Brother Zoom, he appreciates that a lot. Yeah? I'm sure he appreciates that. He's happy when you help. Yeah. Oh, the church always needs help. But sometimes, but not, not you guys, but other Christians, not Christians in this church, but other Christians, yeah. yeah. These people say something like this. Well, I already lead worship. I already play the drums. I already MC for the church. That's enough. God has something for us all to do. At the end of the story, Jesus said this. Verse 35. He said, Do not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white in the harvest. Jesus was saying, tomorrow is not the time to do the will of God. 
Next week is not the time to decide, okay, I'll follow what God's plan is for my life. Jesus was saying to his disciples, now is the time. The harvest is ready. It's time to embrace the will of God and do the will of God now. Sometimes we say, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, I want to do it, but in another season of my life. I believe this morning God is urging some of us today. Now is the time. Today is the day to surrender again to God's purpose. There is so much to do for God. God desires for us to be like Jesus. To share the living water with the people around us. To tell God's purpose for the other people in the world. But we must first, as God's people, surrender to His plan for our lives. You know, every day of our life, there are people around us who need us to obey the will of God. Amen. There are Samaritan women around us who need us to share the living water. There are people in our family, in our community. They are depending on us. They are depending on us to do the will of God. So that they can know the goodness of God. Amen. If Jesus had said, if he said, oh, yeah, today I won't do the will of God. This Samaritan woman, she would have never known the goodness of God. She would not have been able to drink from the living water that gives eternal life. And as I close here this morning, I want to, I want to encourage you with this. I want to challenge you with this. Yes, we need to do God's will. But the world also needs us to do God's will. If we do not follow God's will for our life, we will not have the peace and joy that God desires for us. But if we do not follow the purpose for God's life, Many other people around us will never know Jesus. We need it and they need it. Amen. God has called us. He has a purpose for us. Let us commit again to fulfill God's purpose for our life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, this morning, I thank you for this church. I thank you for every person that is here. And I pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with this in their own hearts. God, we need your grace. We need your strength. The flesh is weak, and we need your help. Our own flesh is weak, but we need your help to do your will. I pray, God, this morning that you would give us a fresh passion and focus for your purpose. God, I pray that you would help us to push aside excuses. And to say, God, I want to do your will. God, I pray that you would help us to see the excuses in our own life. That you would fill us with your spirit. 
fullest of power to kill the desire of the flesh. And then we would do your will. God, we desire that other people come to know you. That the world around us would be able to drink from the living water of life. God, help us to share that with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to ask for just a moment. Maybe, maybe this morning, maybe someone can come and play the guitar. Hello, could you come or someone come? And as he is coming this morning, and as he is coming, I want to ask you this morning. Maybe, maybe you're struggling with what I've been talking about. In, in my heart, I feel that there are some here who are struggling with this. This morning, God is asking you, asking us to make a fresh commitment to Him. To once again allow His purpose to be our number one priority. That God's purpose is our number one priority. And that we push aside those other things and say, God, let my life be for your purpose. God, let your purpose be the strength of my life. I want to ask everyone to stand up this morning. And I want you to join hands with the people who are around you. And I want you to pray for the people that you're holding hands with. And I want you to lift them up before God and say, God, help them. Help them to follow your purpose and your will. Father, this morning as a church family, we lift each other up to you. We lift each other up to you. And we ask you to help us. I encourage you to lift your voices and pray, church. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, God, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, that you would strengthen this church, Lord, and there would be a fresh focus and fresh passion for your God. specifically about what I've been talking about this morning. 
Maybe you feel this struggle going on in your own heart. I want to invite you as it's okay, but as, uh, as Lop is playing and singing, yeah. Um, I want to invite you to come. We would like to spend a little bit of time agreeing with you in prayer. Yeah. So uh, I want to invite you. If you would like prayer, I invite you to come. Father in Jesus' name, I pray. I pray for our Lord's soul. God, I pray, God, that you would bless him. God, I ask you, Lord, to give him the grace and strength in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you, Jesus, God, to help you for everything that would try to distract him. In Jesus' name, I pray. God, I ask you, Jesus, Lord, to fill him afresh with your spirit. Anoint him with your power. Lord, I pray, God, that just as your spirit came upon as you came upon Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would come upon him, Lord, and that you would anoint him to do your work, God, I pray in Jesus' name. This is not about my or my power, but it is by your spirit. And we ask Jesus, God, for your, your will, your strength, and for your purpose in this life. In Jesus' name, I pray.
Word says, Greater is He that is within us than He that is within the world. And today we claim victory for this Lord Jesus' name. And we ask the Lord to give me a peace of mind. I pray, God, that you would give a focus on your purpose. Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that today we can put mark a special name in our own heart and mind, God, as you would focus on your spirit to give your strength and your purpose. And God, 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 Thank you. 